at the end of the day, some of these projects, and Drew, you know how these are, you're so passionate about them, you're gonna do it in one way or another. Like whether you use this in church or not, or hey, you may not be buying into it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna produce the first five minutes of it so you can see the quantum quality and you know right. how we're gonna yeah. put this together. And that's yeah. that's the extent to which we've believed in our projects here. Hey guys, Drew Shetler here with Meridium Films, and uh, today we're privileged to have our guest Larry Chapel. Larry, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, Drew. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Um, Larry uh, is just an incredible storyteller, incredible filmmaker. He actually is the uh, student ministries pastor at Lancaster Baptist Church. Along with that, he oversees their live stream, works with the creative team, um, and producing just in incredible stuff with um, uh, Christmas and Easter films and then youth conference videos. And uh, I really consider Larry a good friend, a mentor, and someone who's inspired me uh, to be where I am today. And uh, so again, uh, thanks, Larry, for uh, just taking some time out of your busy schedule to to talk through some media in regards to church. So thanks again yeah. for being here. That's my favorite thing to talk about. So yeah, anytime. Man. Yeah. So um, first, we, we kind of want to talk about your journey into media, but specifically filmmaking and storytelling and uh, how that evolves over time, because you've been doing this quite a while. And like, where did it all start, that passion and how it's developed? So go for it. Yeah, I, I bet my story is similar to others. We grew up here in Southern California and we're just about an hour away from Hollywood. And so I remember as a kid, one year my parents got us passes to Universal Studio and uh, just going on the, the backlot tour and seeing all, you know, the, the, the sets and the prop houses. Yeah. You know, they talk about movie magic and as a kid, it, that, was, that was it. And I feel like that was such a cool time in filmmaking as well because there wasn't, you know, um, not to diminish like the amazing things they're doing digitally these days, but everything back then was all practical, you know? So um, there's just something that kind of just sparked my imagination, coupled with right. the fact that my parents got a, you know, little family camcorder. And I know that's similar, it uh, seems like every filmmaker I talk to, like that was somewhere along their journey, just access to some, you know, yeah. cheesy VHS camera. I got one um, right, right up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I, I used to get in trouble for uh, grabbing that thing and taking it, but I thought it was cool. My parents eventually recognized uh, that it was, you know, maybe something that I should develop. And rather than keep the camera from me, I became the, the family camera guy. My dad bought me my first computer, you know, which is cool. And something as a parent now, I'm looking to see how I can help my kids develop their gifts and ability that God has given them. But yeah, just some of those uh, uh, early influences. And then I think as far as bringing that back into the church world, uh, I feel I grew up at such a uh, unique time when desktop video editing, like for the first time ever became a uh, possibility. We used to do church videos when I was a kid um, I would hear about some of the guys on staff traveling down to LA and using some of the studio, like the editing bays at night, because it's not something you actually could do at your house, you know? Oh, yeah. But when Firewire came along and desktop video editing, that was a game changer. So I feel like I got a front row seat to all those things and um, just a culmination of all that. And just, and then, um, being at a church that had those tools having access, which I think is really important for, you know, if you if you happen to be watching this and maybe you're just dipping your feet into it, um, getting access to these tools, it doesn't have to be the best, but um, being able to rub shoulders with someone that's a little bit better than you and then having the tools at your disposal. I think it was a culmination of all those things that kind of shaped uh, where I am today with, with filmmaking. So tell us, um, you know, the idea and uh, conception of using uh, narrative videos in a church service and how that came to be. So when I was um, a student at uh, West Coast Baptist College and then going to Lancaster Baptist, um, you know, I was I was seeing the media develop or evolve, and it wasn't just getting better; it was um, getting more creative at, at how it would be used in a church service. And to give some context, I mean, probably many of the people watching have used videos um, from Lancaster Baptist Church, some of their presentations, but how it incorporated uh, the music, 
uh, and the preaching and, and it like wove in. And it was, I've never seen that done before. And I was completely amazed specifically with the film, The Gift was the one that just blew me away. And um, so uh, many of you watching uh, might be hesitant, whether you're a pastor um, or, or someone on staff on the creative team on how to use, you know, it's like movies in church that, that might seem a little weird or, or films in church I, or like what goes first? Do we just watch the film and then, and then we, you know, have a night, a movie night and you can do so many different things. But I think what Larry did with his team uh, a number of years ago starting that uh, just as incredible. And again, it, it inspired me so much um, that that we, we do that with our church. And uh, I just, I love it. So the question is, um, where did it all start? Like the conception, where maybe where did you get the idea from? Uh, what were some of the hesitancies, uh, the compromises that you had to make? And then the impact in the, in the congregation um, and then in the community, what was like the response? But to start it off, like wh- where did it all begin, that concept? Yeah, so going back a little bit, um, it used to be when I was a kid, you did the same thing. We sat in church and we watched like missionary slideshows, right? Just like right, picture yeah. after picture. Um, and then what happened was uh, missionaries and other guests would come in and we'd start to see like video in church, which was like completely new. And it used to be that if someone had a video, it didn't even matter if it was good or if it was long or if it, you know, it was just captivating because it was new. And I feel like we live in such a media saturated culture that that's all mm-hmm. changed as well. In fact, like we've all experienced someone coming up to us and like, hey, watch this video and our eyes drift down to the bottom of the uh, the YouTube. You know, we want to see how long it is because you yeah, really yeah. don't have the attention for that. Um, and I mean, there've been people that have sent me links before, hey, this is powerful and I may or may not even get to watching it. It's just kind of, we are so saturated, you know, with video that it's different than it used to be because when we first started, um, if you had a video, it was it was awesome just because you had it. But right. um, but the but the but the world has gotten so um, our our culture is so immersed. In it. You pull up to a gas station, right, and you're you're bombarded with the video messaging. Right. You know, yeah. so oh, yeah. we're surrounded by it. And I feel like as believers, we have to up our game as well. Um, our video, our culture speaks a visual language, and I feel like this this tool of media is 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 the language they speak you know and mm-hmm. so um the church should be leading the forefront uh in in how we produce and we aren't always i feel like i feel like we can definitely learn from you know a lot of different places and maybe we'll talk about that later yeah. um but we saw this as an incredible tool i guess is where it started yeah i think um there's some merit to like seeing something that's done well and just trying to copy it because we've all been there before. Um, mm-hmm. But I think there's something better to be of said of like, let's try to figure this out for our church and for our congregation. And I guess that's kind of where using a narrative film in our congregation, our church really began. We used to do these, um, you know, Christmas musical, everything was in, in person and live and on stage. And yeah, like a, dra- a drama production. Th- yeah. Yeah. And there's, um, and I've been to like different Broadways in New York and, and, and Hollywood, and I definitely have an appreciation for those, but ours always fell, you know, fell short. <laughs> and right, yeah. uh, there's, there's something, um, there's something to be said of video and cinema to be able to guide someone's eyes, to be able to help them along with how they should be feeling about what they're seeing because you know yeah. when you're doing video it's everything it's it's lighting it's film it's music it's the whole package and you know the acting and so we saw this as a better alternative for some of what we do and and you know for a christmas musical or an easter musical um and we saw i mean you you felt it in the auditorium you know you weren't just amused like i felt like a drama would sometimes do and not that there aren't other churches. I've seen some churches that pull off some incredible drama. Yeah, so right, yeah, yeah. But but for us, I, I felt like we were, we were missing the mark there, and I felt like we could we could maybe do a little bit better job with with the narrative. And then we just we started to think, um, you know, if you're looking at a service, which I think that all of us should do, any of us who have any say in service programming or putting together a cue card, we need to take a fresh look at those every once in a while. So we're like. You know, we started to talk about where do we fit this into the cue card and what happens sometimes, and this happens even at a youth conference, especially when different teams are working on their own 
areas of responsibility. Mm-hmm. A service can come together like, okay, well, this is what the music team is going to do. And now the media has their little blip, you know, and we thought, well, what if we can pull it all together? You know, even the preaching and, and my dad's been great with that as well. So if you're a pastor listening to this, um, one of the things he let us do is kind of come alongside of him and work with him on on his sermon. He still wrote 100% of his sermon, but we we would ask him questions. Uh, where are you going with this? And what if we did this? What if we what if we took your three points of your sermon and you know put three you know video packages? Yeah, different together. chapters. Yeah, like a three act play, but a three act film. But yeah, that was really creative. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what led us to do that more recently. And I feel like. Um, there's a lot of wins all the way around. It's been well received. Uh, not everything we do is just uh, hit out of the park, but the um, the one that you mentioned, the gift, and some of the others. Um, uh, even last year, we did one as a standalone video. It's not all that good because we still tied in a little bit of uh, on camera. You know, there was a mm-hmm. like a, a narrator host on stage. You know, yeah. But we try not to get stuck in a rut like we all do. Um, and the response has been been pretty good uh, in our community and uh, in our church family as well. Yeah. What Were there any hesitancies at first though? Like, okay, video is going to, you know, taking out the drama because that, that had been old hat or, or just tradition and tradition is hard yeah. sometimes to break. Um, and that is like the tradition of, of like all Christmas church services is like a pageant, you know, and you guys took it up to a level, but then it was like, okay, our culture's kind of changing a little bit. The way we communicate might be better used using this technology and like filmmaking. Um, but were there any sort of like hesitancies like, eh, let, I don't know about this. And, and how did you work yeah. through those? Absolutely. I feel like there was there was a lot of hes- there's hesitancies hesitancies on our part, you know. Uh, we, we didn't know how well we could pull it off. There were yeah. um, there's always like financial, <clears throat> which we could talk to, we could talk about gear and budgets and stuff in right. a minute. But um, there were definitely hesitancies from um, from maybe uh, my dad or some of the others who are who really lead our those services, you know, because they're kind of trusting us, right? Um, yeah. It's one of those things that I feel like as soon as we've done it one or two times, like now, um, now I get asked, you know, almost incessantly, what, what are you going to, you know, what are you going to do for this or for that? You know, yeah. I got emails. <laughs> Dan Hopkins, one of our music pastors here, he, he was messaging me last night, you know, I didn't even respond. First thing this morning he comes in because it's almost expected. So, um, but it was a journey. Yeah. To, um, so now you're, now you're saying you're like the, you're like the leader of it now. Now everyone comes to you for the creative yeah. I- idea. Like, what are we going to do for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, since when was this my job? Be like, you, you come up with something, you know, you, t- um, you took on that load when you decided, when you signed up for it, when you said, I got yeah. an idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, so I, I think I did get a little ahead of myself. Uh, but yeah, there was hesitancies all the way around. Yeah. I think, um, uh, building trust in each other um and kind of proving uh, we did for the gift we did an entire storyboard we didn't use any we you played to our strengths you know we didn't have great actors so no one delivered any lines in that and that's not like because we had this grand creative idea we just didn't have anyone that could deliver any lines you know yeah um and so we kind of worked together as a team on it and and uh yeah that's where we that's yeah where we arrived at yeah, that, I don't that know how well I answer that that question, but yeah, I mean, no, that, definitely with some hesitancies right, all the way right. around. But you have a way, though, I think, Larry, and, and watching this as like, um, you know, if, if you're watching this, you don't know that Larry's dad is the lead pastor. So you, I mean, there is a measure of like a nice, like a relationship that you have with the lead pastor that's different than maybe another um staff member who could be watching something like this because i feel like sometimes it can be hard presenting a new idea if the old way was good it might have not been you know bad or great but if it's good why change it kind of um and so i think i've watched larry i I just think with, with grace and creativity offer this like ideas and and then you know you're taking on a huge weight when you say i've got an idea Here's, and they say, okay, go for it. Don't screw up. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all on you. Um, but you have a great supportive team too. But that that's challenging. And I think what you could circle, what word you could circle in all this is faith. So, sometimes yeah. we, we think faith is some, maybe something a little bit different. But I mean, 
you, you have to believe in what you're doing and you have to be that, that passion behind it. Yeah. But I, I know from a personal testament of watching Larry, um, Larry Chapel just um, kind of work, I guess you could say work his magic, his creativity, but through, um, through the proper orders, through the proper ranks, yeah. and then see it come to fruition literally live on stage or on a screen. It's just really cool. But um, and so, Drew, yeah. you know, sometimes it, it comes together um, and someone sees the finished package, but they don't see how messy it was along the way yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you've been someone that I've called and bounced ideas off of uh, because I think the first step, if, if you if you are hearing this, and you're like, I'd love to do something like this at my church. I would say the first thing is, you have to you have to really embody um, embody that vision and understand it yourself, and then be mm-hmm. able to articulate it so that someone else will buy in. Because what right. it, what you, you want to do is you want to have a team that buys in. And so there's yeah. other here like Jeremy Lofgren and then I mentioned some of the music guys, but what you do is you have an idea, you bounce it off someone, then you have to be able to articulate it really well because you may only have one sh- shot to pitch this, you know? Right. Um, but you want others to buy in and that also, because you you know, you know talk about credibility, but you, you say, well, I don't even have a ch- chance to build it. But you get credibility even by getting buy-in before you ever hit record on a camera or spend yeah. anything on a prop or anything. If, if you come to the table and, hey, I've got buy-in from so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And then the other thing too is, and Drew, I think we've talked about this before, no one likes someone who's just gonna live and die by their ideas, like my way yeah. or the highway. And yeah, if right. you can come together as a team and then hold these, it, you're vulnerable when you do it, but like, here's my idea. Mm-hmm. Um, there's something disarming about that. When you go into a meeting and say, this is what I'd love to do, um, and if you're not feeling it, you know, and we don't like to do that because we're like, well, my whole project could get tabled. Yeah. Um, but going into there with some v- uh, vulnerability, like disarms whoever you're you're making the pitch to. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, some of these projects, and Drew, you know how these are, you're so passionate about them, you're going to do it in one way or another. Like whether <laughs> you use this in yeah. church or not, or hey, you may not be buying into it, so I'm going to... I'm going to produce the first five minutes of it, so you can see the quant quality and you know right. how we're going to yeah. put this together. And that's yeah. that's the extent to which we've believed in our projects here. And yeah, that's really that's really good stuff, though. I I, I think I resonate with that of like having clear communication uh, to to those people and pitching that. But then on the flip side of that, like being vulnerable, and I've seen that firsthand, like working just even with youth conference games, like you said, okay, well, let's come up with a game. And I'd like say an idea or, you know, whatever. And it's just like, eh, I don't like it, you know, but like we're, we're <laughs> yeah. all just like working through things, you know. Um, it's, it's such a healthy, yeah. healthy thing to be candid and yes. throwing your ideas out there and let someone, honestly, we almost make a sport of it, how brutally we can shoot each other's ideas. Down, like. <laughs> and awesome. it becomes fun, yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta have someone like Drew or someone in your life that you can bounce ideas off of. To yeah. You. I feel like that's so important. Yeah, you, you can't I mean, although it's so emotionally charged because you're passionate about it. Passion and emotion are like, you know, together. Um right at the same time you have to be willing to like detach from that and just look at things yeah. as, as rational as possible um like we know i feel like jason Struhl, uh if yeah. anyone watching knows jason i mean he works on yeah. or or worked with you um like he's he's very good with that but having people like that is really it's just i don't know yeah it's really cool to see stuff like that but yeah um yeah you mentioned jason there's yeah exactly i'm i'm 100 yeah. percent. yeah yeah um let, let's talk about uh, some of the resources you had, uh, the gear, budget, and then creative problem solving on set. Um, I, I think maybe those who are watching, who, whoever may want to do something like this down the road, uh, is intimidated by all the YouTube videos that say you have to buy this camera or this, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is. And you, Everyone, you know, Larry, you've grown your your inventory of uh, gear, and so have I, um, and we're all at different stages. But anyone can be a filmmaker tomorrow, especially with yeah. you know the technology we have. I mean, it's so inexpensive, so it's it's a really tough. Like, talk to us about that fine line of balance between like what gear you actually need, what would be fun to have though, um, and then like elevating story above the gear because I know you yeah. love I lo- like we nerd out on gear like it's so cool right. but um but then specifically though with with all the productions you've done talk about like the gear the budget and then that that created problem solving yeah uh you and I we're on the same page uh, on this one yeah. um 
I, and I love to talk about gear, but I've seen people that have some amazing gear that have just really produced some awful, <laughs> <laughs> awful videos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then I've seen some people that blow me away um, uh, with, I mean, Diego Contreras shot that film uh, for Apple on an iPhone, and it's just, uh, it was awesome. You know, it's just shot on an iPhone 11 Pro. Um, and But the story was there, the cinematography was there. Yeah. Um, so here's what I would say. First of all, um, a couple a couple thoughts. First of all, you got to work with what you have. Um, know what you have. Know the limitations. Sometimes you'll grow an appreciation for what you get one day by fully understanding, you know, what you have right now and how to use it. Um, some people they have gear that they're not using to the fullest potential. You know, um, the, if you're if you're part of a church staff, um, this would not apply if you're freelancing. But I would say make it a part of the yearly budget conversation. Um, mm-hmm. I think sometimes what happens is, uh, you know, media guys they only recognize the need that they have in the moment that they need it. You know, if they would have thought ahead, yeah, maybe maybe at the, at then like at that we're doing point our yearly, it's too late. Yeah, so having yeah. It in the budget, yeah. yeah, putting it in the budget and kind of maybe even personally putting it in your budget. Um, but uh, so a few thoughts. I would say renting is always an option. I know you've done that. I've rented yeah. gear. I've rented lights. That's We've good, rented, yeah. you know, airy sky panels and right. you know stuff that we couldn't afford. We were able to rent. Right. Um, so that's always an option. Uh, our, some of our first stuff that we shot was just like on a GH2, you know, micro four thirds. We didn't even know anything about lens. We were just shooting on a kit lens, and some of the stuff yeah. turned out pretty good. And then eventually we started renting some lenses and things like that. Um, I would say uh, really don't overlook the audio. I feel like our our human minds have zero tolerance for bad audio. Oh yeah. If totally. someone's trying to deliver lines but you can't hear them, you know, or someone. So I obsess over audio. Um, one of the guys Which, here. Let, at church. let me stop and say, like, how long yeah. have you obsessed over audio? Like, has it been you know ever since your career, or has it been incessantly more? Recently, I'm just curious. Yeah, um, it has been a result of. Uh, I swatched my AirPods here because this one just told me it's getting ready to die. So, um, oh, I, I think okay, good. I got you in both. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I, I've had enough projects where the audio was bad, you know, and and that you, you can film something that looks incredible and then the audio is bad, and I just. It's so frustrating because it doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, Steven Spielberg could have shot the stuff and the audio is not going to rescue it. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And the message and the clarity of it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's been something that over time I, I really obsess over. Right. And the, one of the guys that holds the boom mic for us here at church, volunteers, I'm always over his shoulder. And, like, <laughs> I don't trust anyone with audio because I always want to look at the levels. Sometimes I'll say, hey, Chris, what's our levels at? You know, I want to I wanna read out, you know. I tell the, I don't like someone running audio who's really timid, you know, who's, if they have a problem, is not going to tell me. Uh, Because I've had that too. Like, someone didn't want to tell me, you know, so. And there's this uh, this buzz in the audio file. You know, know, (laughs) this little ticking sound or, you know. um, It's funny. One time, I'll tell one story, and uh, Trevor Lander, you might know, you know Trevor. He was just uh, here to help me get set up. Trevor's like a huge help. We love to talk about this stuff too. But one time we were filming, and uh, we had no one run audio, so we picked Trevor, and he's holding. Uh, we have a boom mic, and uh, he's going in one of those little handheld, you know, H4N devices, you know. Yeah. And we keep on asking him. I keep on saying, Trevor, does it sound okay? He's like, Yeah, it sounds kind of airy. I'm like, Well, put the mic right, right over him, you know. I keep on giving him this direction. Well, we got back, and the mic that he was holding over wasn't even turned on. The input wasn't was connect- wrong. So. Yeah. <laughs> So he's just hearing the audio from his handheld, and it was oh, sounded man. so bad. It, it wasn't his a little fault. airy. <laughs> I love it. I mean, yeah, he even told us that it was messed up. But yeah. So yeah, I obsess over audio. Um, I think people obsess over the visual because that's what they see first. You know, like I yeah. want to get that shot, and yet yeah. I've learned just in the last probably six months to eight months how 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 crucial it is, and yet that's like a whole nother world of you know audio. I'd almost like you know, would you rather watch a movie? or listen to one. And it's kind of, yeah. it's amazing how God created our senses and how they mesh together. But there are different things that come to light in a story when you listen to one than when yes. you watch one. And it's, you know, it's fascinating, but I agree with your, it, that. Someone told important. me once, 
Someone told me one time that YouTube, way back in the day when bandwidth wasn't what it is today, and now they can stream 4K, whatever, you know, but back in the day when they had to decide, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, this is what I heard, that YouTube had to decide whether they're gonna put their, their money and their energy and, and, and actually allot the bandwidth to the video or to the audio, and they chose to go audio because people could basically put up with the 320p, 480p video yeah, but um, not the bad audio. But, but not bad audio. So yeah. audio is so important. Yeah. Um, so gear, don't overlook the audio. You can always rent is always an option. Um, one piece of advice I would say is, and you've I've made this mistake so many times, and I probably will make it again in the future. Drew, tell me if you've done this. <laughs> um, where you rent something and like it's the day of set, you're like, oh, we got this new piece of gear. You know, it's, it's your day to film. You're on set and you're trying to finangle with something or get it yeah. to work, you know. I oh, would say yeah. if you rent something, get it in early. And yeah, get it, it in out. early, yeah. You mentioned that how you guys got, uh, oh no, we were talking about like a grip truck um, and yeah. uh, just, you know, and a grip truck comes with like stands and Apple boxes and all sorts of stuff just to help, you know, support the expensive gear that you have. And uh, you said, you know, I, I, I was, con you were concerned, like, like we, we had the budget to do it, but I didn't want to because I was concerned we'd play with it all day and then not do yeah. the shoot, which is, you know, I mean, it's a reality, but yeah, I've been there. Or like, you don't know uh, all the buttons and everything, like you got a camera or even yeah. a lens, like just, just practicing uh, with your rental yeah. gear is good, whether it's focusing, like every focus pole is different with each lens. So all that stuff, it's good to troubleshoot before the day of shooting. You know? yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah and then take take care of whatever gear you have is like my last little piece yeah. of advice because i feel i see a lot of guys just not i mean they have something and especially in the church world and especially if you're sharing gear um i feel like i'm like the gear mom around here i'm always telling people <laughs> hey put the lens cap on do this or that because just the reality of it is like if, if some of our stuff breaks we we won't be able to replace it you know yeah um and so take care of your stuff. Yeah, too. that wear and, wear and tear, like it, it builds on itself. But yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you mentioned one story about Trevor. I don't know if there's anything else. You, you, you have some, some memorable moments on set or making making these films. Oh, man. that's the, that, I, I think that's probably the thing I enjoy about it almost the most is just um, the crew that we're with. I love, I love um, shooting things and filming things that I couldn't do on my, my own, where you have to trust someone else to take yeah. something out on something. I mentioned Trevor. Trevor's like just an all around like utility player. He really understands all the grip grip stuff. He's taken it upon right. himself to watch YouTube videos and be that guy. What I was gonna mention was, I, I think this is really cool somewhat about filmmaking is, um, you gotta have guys who are, are good at, you know, the technical aspect of the actual camera, um, you know, whether it's, you know, pulling focus or doing the audio, um, lighting, all the, you know, DP, director, like knowing the ins and outs of, you know, camera work. But then like Trevor, and, and I'm sure he's picked up a lot of stuff over over yeah. time, but he's more of a practical, I guess you could say like a handyman engineer kind of guy. And what I think yeah. is cool is if you're, if you're watching this and you might be pretty good um, with the technical aspect and you want to do a film, you can't do it alone. Just want you to know that, yeah. but um, but involving people, you're like, and no one else does filmmaking. Well, involve a guy like Trevor, like an, a guy in your church or or someone you know who's so, somewhat engineer talented or like handy around the house, whatever. They're good with woodworking or something, and they might love the the concept of like um, that story and then being a part of something bigger than themselves, but then being on set, seeing the behind the scenes, and they don't have to know anything about actual filmmaking. Um, I think that's cool to, to, to your point and a practical point is get people who are involved that aren't necessarily filmmakers and you'll be surprised the, the film team that you can develop. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the more projects you do together, you know, we, we, we've watched videos on how like how a set, cause I mean, obviously Hollywood's figured out how to do it. So we, we've picked up on a lot of their protocols and stuff. And so now our sets, they're getting more and more advanced to where when we walk on, you know, we've got a call sheet and we've got walkie talkies, you know, especially if we've got church members that are volunteering their time. Um, but Trevor's been one of the guys to help us develop in that, that yeah. area, you know. What's been it's, it's like, been blast. Um, like one of the, I guess you could say like the jankiest like <laughs> uh, sets you've like created, like some, something you were trying to pull off 
Um, you're pretty good with visual effects. I like to, I, I'm not, so I just, yeah. anything practical I can think of in my head, but like keeping it to more of a practical level, what are some things that you pulled off on a, on a set, whether uh, probably a lot in youth conference stuff, but um, that was like, only if the people, you know, watching this knew the behind the scenes, like do you, do you have any yeah. thing like okay, that? Okay, so <laughs> we did for youth conference, we did one time we built this space pod in my garage. Oh, yeah. We filmed so many things in my garage that actually have turned out pretty well. Uh, yeah, the we one this... the one with the um I don't know what a Romania or something like yeah. the Ukraine the the like he literally Larry's like shoot, shoot like or whatever the actor was, but he produced this uh video of like a guy shooting a rifle in his garage, but it looks so real, right? That was Yeah, in the, yeah that was so yeah, cool. Yeah, we had like this snow falling just kind of but uh we took that idea from something we'd seen on a national do- uh Nat Geo documentary, and we yeah. kind of reenacted this uh, this shooting in Romania, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so we did that in my garage. We did, um, and all these things, if you zoomed out, it would be like yeah, so right, hokey, yeah. but like we pulled it off in the moment. We built the little space pod, which again, had so many imperfections, but by the time we you know yeah. filmed it, it looked okay. I think I told you this story. I was having a bad attitude one day, and I was with Jason. And we wanted to film like an Easter project. We were we were trying to find some place where we could build a tomb, you know. Yeah. And uh, at that Avenue K house that that, that I was mentioning a moment ago, uh, Jason's running around. And, and Jason, I I love having Jason around because he has endless ideas. He never yeah. not has an idea. Like me, sometimes I get stumped and I got nothing. Right. Yeah. Jason always has an idea. So yeah. he had so many ideas it was almost annoying me because he's running around. <laughs> what if you did this? What if you what did this? You? I'm like. I hate all these ideas, you know? <laughs> well, then he jumps up in this, like, I didn't even know what it was. And I've been there hundreds of times, but this big box in the ground, and he disappears in this hole. And I hear in this big, like, echo cavernous, guys, it's perfect, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even want to go down there. And I peeked in there, and I jumped down in this hole with him, and I'm like, dude, this is, like, this is the perfect tomb. And yeah. it was awesome. It made for some incredible footage and it, it changed my whole attitude about the project you know That's and again so cool. it's just a hole in the ground and yeah. uh it it turned out you know oh yeah looking pretty good filming um some of these we've done now uh about four uh, yeah we're in f- uh, production for number five but for these films and it's it's just me basically we don't have necessarily the staff as you you do but i know the importance of collaborating with so many people but i get um, I'm try- I, I feel like creativity is problem solving, you know? And, yeah. oh, and you're yeah. just trying to figure, out, figure things out. And I've got this story in my mind and then, and then trying to find locations and where to go and all that. And like, can this, can this happen? And, and I'm sure you've been there so, or you have yeah. been there so many times. Like we had this film, Starlight, that we filmed in a mine, uh, a mine drift, but it wasn't a real mine, it was a museum exhibit. Yeah. And we only had about like, eight foot wide by like maybe 40 feet and then another like right angle that was like 10 feet long and that was it. So we had uh, in the story, we had this guy, uh, there was like a mine induced seismic activity. So all these guys are, uh, you know, they're running out of the mine, but we had them run, you know, one way and then we had them run back, you know, and just cut back and forth. it turned out awesome. And uh, we had some guy like flipping on on and off the lights, which I know you could do stuff like that in post, but we all, it it brings a lot of energy when it's all practical. Cause like the lights are going, you know the camera's shaking a little and uh, I had a guy there was like a little a second story um, that he was like throwing dirt down a little bit like it was coming down and it was and he had a board he was throwing I mean it was kind of cool seeing all that and then um, boy a lot of like uh, like in the gift that we did was a car accident and I I remember telling my wife the story and my pastor I'm like yeah we're gonna have a car accident and he's like (laughs) <laughs> you can't do that. Like, uh, like we don't have the budget yeah. to get a car and do that and all that stuff. And um, I said, no, I can. I think I can figure it out with a lot of quick cuts, camera movement, and some, you know, just trickery and light coming in. You know, the front light there and all that yeah. stuff. And um, it it turned out really well. And that's I love that stuff about filmmaking. The yeah. there's the story aspect where you know hopefully you're trying to impact somebody. Um, but then there's like the fun part of not just yeah. the gear, but like how can we pull this off and look yeah. like Hollywood, you know, look really cool. That's so, so much fun. I love that. You said it. It's, it's problem solving. And yeah. when, you, when you come to – we've talked like uh, writing isn't my biggest strength. I feel like I can take someone's story or script and yeah. make that come to life. Um, but 
I, I love when, you know, everything's an option, you know, like we'll figure out later, you know, you know, like last yeah. year we needed, um, uh, a train to shoot on and we thought, well, we'll be able to find one. And, you know, so we wrote this whole thing around a train and then we couldn't find a train. So we ended up building, you know, but like, I loved the fact that it was all problem solving, like you said, and that, that was really the fun in it. And, yeah. uh, and then being able to, to actually pull it off to where it, it looks believable on camera. Right. You know? Yeah. I remember one yeah. uh, last year we did a Christmas film that was more traditional called Peace on Earth, and yeah. I, I was trying, I was racking my brain trying to think of how I wanted the angel to look, and yeah. I didn't want to show it physically because I feel like the moment you show a person, you know it's not right. an angel. So I wanted right. to keep that separation and more just like a, like the shining sort of like yeah. glory kind of feel, yeah. and. Uh, and I was like, how, you know, and I think there's a lot of ways to pull it off. But basically, I came up with like this almost like sequins, like something w a, a girl would put on her purse. <laughs> I think yeah. I did have a purse, actually, that I found at a dollar store or something. And I put on a, a piece of like PVC pipe and a cardboard to like s spread it yeah. out. And I shined my phone at it because uh, yeah. you had to have just the right amount of light. Uh, to shine it on the sequins to reflect on the, the actor and sort of have this like, you know, shimmering sort of being this this you know entity, and I was trying to portray it that way, and I think it could definitely be improved. But I was pretty happy how it came out. And then like when we did it with uh, the shepherds, like the scene was so much bigger. We used broken mirrors, <laughs> and we used a giant light, and the mirrors were freezing. Like you know, we live in yeah. Colorado, and right. it, it, literally they were frozen, and I had to go defrost them on. Um, on the fire, we had a fire out there and we were defrosting them, but we're out there. And I was reading through the lines. It was just me and Jason out there. I was reading through the lines and I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what does the shepherd or the angel say, you know, and it came, you know, and it came to pass the um, glory to God in the highest, you know, I'm like, glory right. to God in the highest. And I'm like <laughs> flashing this thing and I'm like, shouting out cues like you know q1 you know q2 like you know, all this stuff and we had a blower out there like people it was i just love like filmmaking all that stuff is so much fun if you can pull it off and it looked like i feel like it was okay you know it wasn't yeah. like i had all this footage i'm like <laughs> this is amazing but it was like all right but anyways we, so. one time in my one more garage story we uh we filmed for a team camp. Uh, we had a pirate theme, and we thought, let's build a pirate ship in my garage. And oh, yeah. it like it turned out so much better. It was one of those things where we didn't even try, and it turned out looking so good. Yeah. Um, we just went and got these planks, you know, from the hardware store, and we built like a little half of a pirate ship, and we got like a haze machine in there, and the lighting worked out really well. Uh, but I put black plastic everywhere because I wanted to really actually have water like dripping through the tops, oh, yeah. you know, because I wanted it to look like these guys are in the bottom of a boat. And uh, it was it all turned out awesome. But I, I ended up putting so much water in there. Well, then it was the day before team camp, so I didn't have time to clean it all up. And we came home, and you know, we live in the desert. It's like 110 degrees. This is after team camp, and I hadn't cleaned up this big, watery pirate ship mess. And I open my garage door, and I'm just hit. It feels like a sauna. I'm just hit with oh, the, like, wow. the heat and the steam. My glasses fogged up. <laughs> And dude, cockroaches ran everywhere. Oh wow! I don't know how they're attracted to that moisture, like how they yeah. found them that quickly. Termites was, too. Sometimes they they go to that. But yeah, that's crazy. It was so that's, gross. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not crazy. a good story. But yeah. But like one other practical thing um, is last time I talked to you over the phone um, was like what fills the frame and how important that is. And we've talked a little bit about gear and what's available and problem solving. So this kind of is a little bit like that. But if you could just talk a little bit, Larry, about um, you know what actually does fill the frame, how important that is when you're talking about your your actors, your set dressing, um, your um, you know props or whatever those are. How how important that is. Maybe sometimes more than what's behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, it's what you fill the frame with. I don't know if there's something you'd like to talk about. That. Yeah, uh, th I love this stuff, and I love working with other people. Uh, you know, setting up a camera and you know really examining the shot so we always start wide you know because you know you always need context to wherever you are yeah. and what things in the room can you use you, you mentioned even just like props and things like that what can you use to kind of tell the story and right. that's where lighting and props um, come in I remember one time on the, the Christmas film that you referenced a while ago that we shot 
Uh, there's one scene where the dad's pacing back and forth and he's waiting for his son to get home. And so we made sure the lighting wasn't really, you know, as as vibrant as it had been, as a little more moody. Um, yeah. We took some Christmas lights on the tree, t- uh, the the tree, and we we unplugged them during the shot to make them go off. You know, just to we use yeah, those that things. Was cool. Yeah, yeah, just to kind of portray the emotion. So wide context. What are you seeing? Because I feel like there's a lot of cues, you know, and a lot of them are just subconscious, subconscious and. Um, and then as you get closer, you can evoke so many different emotions just by people's face, facial ex- expression, how you light them. That's where you can really see. And, and the eyes are, are key to all oh, of yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so just kind of uh, starting wider and then, and then working yeah. in more closely. And then what are they interacting with with their hands? I, I really like to shoot tight, you know? Um, yeah. I love giving using... giving your actors like uh, an action. I heard yes. and I've, I've done it too. Uh, especially people who aren't normal actors seems to really help. Like whether you know giving them a piece of paper and a pencil, but it gives Absolutely. like whatever it is something to do a newspaper, a book, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I, have you done anything like that? But stuff like that is re- really good. Absolutely, it's that's so helpful to give them something to, to have to, yeah, to interact action, with. Yeah. Makes it less awkward um and and then just exploring those different emotions that you can evoke you know like little things like awkwardness i think you actually can create awkwardness or a, something unsettling feeling you know with yeah with, before you even add the music which is so powerful but right. i remember with this one shot in that same film where our character it's kind of a prodigal son story so he finds mm-hmm. himself away from god and he's at you know this was it was a it was a time period piece, so it's you know 1950s, 60s or something. Yeah. But he's at a party, and the whole idea was that he wasn't supposed to be there. And so we had this one shot where we went wide, and he's silhouetted in the doorway, and there's everyone else is having fun, but this this couple walks right past him, and but we kept our character in the doorway, and it created this you know like if you've ever been in a doorway with someone, yeah. it's not really meant for anyone but one person, but it created right. this awkwardness in that that movement, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That but I te- love yeah, that's really playing good. with that. Yeah. 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 And then you can use the uh, the camera movement to kind of accentuate some of that too, and let that that camera sometimes be a character and. Um, and this is watching right. your stuff. This is what you do so well too. And some of the stuff that you mentioned is letting that camera be be yeah. a person there in the room. Yeah, in be the another mindset. character. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, it's simple things like dollying in, you know, pushing in on your character, just like like things are closing around them, you know, yeah. or pulling yeah. pulling out to show isolation and and this feeling of loneliness. It's almost like, yeah, it's it's just amazing camera movement, all that stuff. But uh, yeah. Um, I, I think um, uh, grab meme reference frames, and I know this is something that you do, is so yeah, helpful right. on a project. Oh, sometimes yeah, you're like, totally. you don't know how to describe what it is that you're wanting to accomplish, but then you can look at, yeah. you know, you can use that reference image and say, well, it's it's like this, but not this, you know, and here's, I, I don't like how this is framed, but I like the lighting in the shot. Right. That way... Because when yeah. you come to the day where you're filming, especially in church world, when you don't have infinite amount of time, yeah, you need everyone in storyboard to, get on the same page, this, yeah. to be on the yeah. same page and say, yeah. okay, we're going to try to copy this look from right. this frame. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. and then just honestly, just studying those too. Because if it's been something that's been produced in Hollywood and it's done yeah, well, it's good. I mean, yeah. it, uh, people are masterful of their jobs to be able to, right. to do that. You know, And studying... We'll, Rather than just copying, which I said earlier, there's value in that for sure. Right. But man, if you can understand why, yeah, why they frame something that way or use those colors, right. then then you're better off for it. I think coming, and this is a, maybe a little bit more advanced for I don't know some of the listeners wherever they're at, but like I've known, I'm I'm trying to grow in this is coming up with sort of a brand or a theme for my my film, not just in the story, but taking the story's theme. And then making it congruent with the you know the wardrobe of the actors. Obviously, yeah. your uh, com- uh, song, your film score, um, your uh, set dressing, your location, um, the mood and style of the shots. It's just a. Ama- it's literally. I heard um, Tarantino talk about how the way he directs films is like 
conducting a symphony for an audience. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we've all seen an orchestra and how that conductor gets up there and directs all the different instruments. And that's what a film is, but more you're playing with people's, I wouldn't say playing with people's emotions, but you're, you're conducting people's hearts. You're directing them in a way. Yeah. So everything that fills the frame is important. And I'm trying to grow in this is, having that consistent theme where you can see something online and be like, oh, I love the color scheme there, or I love the, the talent look cool or that, that vibe. And although your, your shots can be different, you can have a color contrast of like teal and orange and then make it super high key in a different scene, but make sure you keep that consistent that you're changing, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I find that as cohesiveness I see that yeah. Hollywood does so well with films is they have such a beautiful theme across across from end to end. Good films. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's probably one of the frustrations that we come with in our film is that we don't have all the departments like they have. And so every department yeah. that they would have is really just a volunteer that we would have, you know. Right. And you can't fire volunteers, you know. <laughs> so that really yeah. takes that takes something extra special. Like so like we have We've had in the past, you know, ladies here that help with wardrobe and set design and stuff like that. Well, rather than be frustrated with the ugly colors that they pick or whatever they do, I found it's better to, you know, it takes more work on our part, but like, hey, let's give them some reference frames, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, right, and right. Yeah. Those are so I, good I, I love how you said that, like an orchestra, because at the same time, when it comes together, it's beautiful, but if one thing is off, it's like yeah. a sour note, you know? Yeah. And you, we've all had projects like that where, I mean, it's easier to make a still frame than it is an actual <laughs> file. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. we've all had some beautiful frames, right? Yeah. You know, but then it's like, oh, I don't want to show you the actual film because yeah, you right. know this yeah. this lady's acting or this was terrible, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 elusive too, which also makes it fun to try to like mm -hmm. nail it the next time. Yeah, definitely. So, um, just kind of wrapping this up and 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 concluding with a couple thoughts. Um, you know, we alluded the, to this a little bit at the beginning, but, or, or, or you did, and, and talking about our current culture um, yeah. and where we're headed. And I want to more, not just say generally our culture, but the culture of Hollywood and like the yeah. movies that they're putting out and how they influence our culture um, and us as just people and we tolerate it. Um, but like, what can we do to make a difference um, yeah. in, in storytelling, in filmmaking, um, and why it's important you think that the church should leverage this medium uh, now yeah. more than ever. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the most important question you know, that yeah. we can try to tackle here. And we could probably do another whole podcast later on just that. Um, I think one of the, most, uh, one of the unfortunate things is uh, the, the um, not to get political when I say left, let me just say godless, right? Um, yeah. Godless, uh, there's, I, I feel like we all would understand that there's a godless aspect to right. Hollywood, right? Um, unfortunately, it seems like the, they control the liberal arts, if that makes sense. I mean, if yeah. it seems like the yeah. liberal arts school, the, 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 the cream of the crop as far as talent goes, really usually you know, yeah, the entire art community, like art yeah. itself, that, that creative expression is all, seems yeah. like it's owned by them. Yeah. It, yeah ex you said exactly like it's owned by them. And when you step back and you look at our God and how, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we are his creative expression, right? right. We were made in the image. Right. So we, w when you study what it means to be made in the image of God, it means we, we are able to do things that he does, not to the extent that he does them, but we can show love and mercy and justice yeah. as he does. I also believe that we can be creative as he is. Yeah. And so this is not something that should be owned by any one faction of society. This is something that God has given to us as a gift and we should leverage that that gift. And so what can we do with it? I feel like we can, um, we can take it seriously. We can develop our gifts. Um, we can partner with others. I mean, we can loathe and lament, you know, some of the negative aspects of social media and things like that. But man, there are some positives that you can connect with, you know, someone even like yourself, you know, and yeah. you can you can connect with others and, and bounce ideas of. I love when people send me a project, you know, hey, would you pick this apart or whatever? So that community's there. And then I think that we 
you need to keep on creating and just keep on creating and then yeah. assessing and then creating more. Some things that we create will have uh, an explicit gospel presentation, and I love that. I don't think we right. should ever stop creating those. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the things that I think we'll create will be in, I have a friend that calls it a third lane, you know, where it's not yeah. liberal and secular, but it's not, it's not like overtly just a gospel presentation, but it's something that really is a film that uh, Christian values are permeated in, and I think we yeah. need more of that as yeah. well. Yeah. No, that, yeah, that's really good. And I think that's probably my greatest passion right now. Um, you talk to any pastor and their and their passion is their people, their community. Um, we all have passions like like God puts a burden on our lives for for a group of people uh, to yeah. do something, whatever it is. I know that's that's mine specifically is using this sort of twenty first century means of expression, this communication tool. Um, not just video, but storytelling, and much yeah. like Jesus did while he was on the earth. Like you think about it, like the creator of the world told stories, yeah. he, and he told them exactly. in a way that wasn't always understandable or clear from the beginning. Right. And he gave, and why? Because they were so used to hearing the truth, they were desensitized to it, and and it gave them sort of an opportunity, a different sort yeah. of audience. And I think we are presented with the same responsibility today to be different with it, not 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 sinful um but different approach it differently and um i think you made such a great point about how um hollywood or 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 like just the art community is completely owned by people who do not love god or want anything to do with him and that's not right the church should be owning that much like we look at other religions that own sort of a, a a stereotype the stereotype of of Christians should be one of creativity right. and artistic expression, not to a point where we worship it, but it's a point that this is God and this is how yeah. we express. And it's a little, it can be a little like uh, unsettling, may, may not unsettling, but different for people who aren't as like yeah. expressive in that way. But we yeah. all love story, every one of us, and we all have yeah. preferences and that's okay. Like, you know, but for whatever that's worth. Yeah, so. and, and, and you know, we, we both talked about, um, this this side of Hollywood or you know art yeah. community, um, I I think you and I would both agree they're they're we won't we say that not as though they're the enemy you know and yeah um, I also feel like there are some things that I will not watch because of, you know biblical principles guide me away from them you know um, but there are plenty of things that I can learn from them they're doing it oh, better yeah. than us you oh, know yeah. and that's why you know. There's been. I go to Disneyland. I learn things from from them about the the immersive experience that they yeah. create. You know, things that we can apply to our churches. But there's also things in uh, some of the content that is produced that we can be learners of. So I would say that too, and I, I, I say that with a little bit of caution because it's not a full endorsement on anything, obviously, that Hollywood's ever produced. But yeah. if but you're you only looking to it. other yeah. church videos, yeah, yeah to, oh, to yeah. learn, then you're, you're probably selling yourself a little bit short there as right. well. Right. Yeah. Well, Larry, I th- thanks so much for taking the time uh, to go through some of these these talking points, like uh, really uh, revelatory, you know, just coming up with just a lot of insight on media, on uh, storytelling in the church and why it's important. And I, I just, again, I appreciate so much of you taking this time to do this. And so we'll have to have you on again uh, for sure to talk, you know, part two of all this stuff. So, Oh, man, definitely. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, awesome. Uh, I, like I said, this is my favorite thing to talk about. So yeah, anytime, I'm, I'm game. I appreciate appreciate the conversation. Yeah, thanks. So if you're watching, thanks uh, again for watching and uh, appreciate it. And so we should have some other episodes coming out, but thanks for watching. Uh, Larry's uh, debut here on the podcast and uh, just going over some of this stuff, tackling some of this uh, filmmaking uh, techniques and how to use it in your church. Thanks again for watching.